Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I make quick little paintings using the paint mixer brush. Usually on flowers, sometimes other things, but mostly flowers. They look really good this way. And I know there are plugins and filters and things you can use to do it for you, to make paintings for you, but I like to do it completely from scratch because I like to have total control over my pictures. And it's not that hard. I'm going to use a mouse today to do it. It's a lot easier if you have a little stylus and drawing tablet thing because it's you can control the pressure and it's just so much easier. If you do have one, you want to come up here when you click on the paint mixer brush, you get this little bar and you want to make sure that this is clicked so that it's sensing the pressure of your hand and it makes the brush strokes so much nicer. But we're going to uncheck it because I'm going to use a mouse today just to show you you can do it with a mouse. <laughs> it's just harder. And uh, I have a little stylus and drawing pad. I got it a long time ago. I don't remember where I got it. I'll look around and see if I can find it again. Because I only paid like $45 for it or $50. It wasn't very much. And it does everything I need it to do. It's very basic, but it works fine. I've had it for several years. It hasn't broke yet. So if I can find it, I'll leave a link down there so you can look, check it out. And I'm also going to have a, a link in the description to this picture. I'll put it on my website. So you can have a copy of it and you can follow along or whatever you want to do with it. Except call it your own. And I'm also going to have a link down there for some canvas textures that I'm going to use later. Alright, so the first thing I do is duplicate the picture. So that I always have a little backup. And I'm going to uncheck it, the, this one. We're going to work with this one. But I also like to separate my foreground from my background. That way I can just change the background out any way I want. Alright, so we come over here to the selection brush and we're just going to select the tulip. I almost called it a rose. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. Alright. I'm just going to read it. You don't have to get anything perfect. It doesn't have to be super great. Just get the shape. My selection brush probably should have been bigger, but oh well, got it. Okay. Now we're just going to do Control J. And that is going to make us a new layer with just the selection. And then Control D gets rid of the selection. Or you can come up here to select and click deselect. Alright, now we're going to turn off the layer we just made. And we're going to come back to this background layer. And we're going to click on our paint mixer brush. And now we need to get some brushes. All right, I like to use sometimes watercolors. I mean, there are a lot of one, a lot of brushes you can play with that come with Affinity Photo. I'm going to use the oils, and I'm going to use a different one for the background. We're going to come all the way to the bottom here and pick this one. All right, and make it bigger, and go back to layers. Make sure we're on the right layer. There we go. I was making sure it was on. All right. Normally it pull it preloads it with this color. I don't know why it didn't just now. It, it'll load it with whatever color you have over here, which we don't want. But I was just making sure the brush was on. Uh, we want to make sure that auto load brush is unchecked. You do not want auto loading, and you want to start with a clean brush. So clean the brush, or the C key on your keyboard cleans the brush, and I like doing it that way better. Um, while I'm painting, I'm constantly cleaning the brush instead of having to do a few strokes and then come up here and click clean brush. If you just click the C key as you're going, it, con it keeps the brush clean for you. If you're using a tablet with a the stylus, then you want this clicked over here, this little target looking thing, because that will detect the pressure. But since we're using a mouse, we're not going to click it. All right, let's start at the bottom. Make sure you're on the right layer. Don't start on this layer. Start on the duplicated background layer. And just start doing whatever you want. You can do long strokes, short ones, just blend it however you want. Now it's going to, see it's picking up the color. Notice how it's on the brush now. It's going to pick up whatever color it uh, sees. So if and when you clean the brush, it cleans it and starts fresh and picks up whatever color you run through. So if you go like this, 
it'll pull the color of the tulip out into the painting if you don't want that then you need to clean your brush a lot see as you as i take the brush away look it's got some of that tulip color in it now so if i were to come up here it would wipe that color on there which isn't always bad sometimes that looks really nice but if you don't want that make sure you're cleaning your brush all right let's just you know for the sake of time since i'm making a video i'm just going to kind of try and go fast <laughs> uh, you could be as take as neat as you like and take as long as you like and just clean the brush again clean the brush again as i get closer to the tulip you need to clean the brush a lot because it's going to pick up a lot of that color try not to miss any spots And you can just go right down and you can pull the color into the tulip if you want. It doesn't matter because we're not going to worry about the tulip on this layer. This is just the background. It's not going to show. So that way you can prevent the tulip color coming out unless you want it to. See, we'll do it down here like that. It doesn't look bad. All right. Of course, you can change your brush size. And do whatever you need to. All right. Now we're going to turn this one back on. Okay, now we've got a background. So to do the, the actual tulip, I'm going to change brushes. Uh, I like to use one of these. I'm going to use this one. It's called Fine Fibers Oil. I like to use the ones that have the streaks because it kind of mimics the fibers in the plant. So just with as with any other painting, we're going to start in the back with a clean brush. And we're gonna make it a little smaller. And we're just going to paint along the edges here. Uh, I, I like to have the, mess, the edges messy a little. Oh. Yeah, I'm on the wrong one. I was wondering why wasn't it working? Okay, that makes more sense. There we go. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense for a second. Okay. Let's just go, there we go. Now, see it. You're going to get this big wide brush up here at the tip. Unless you happen to be using the pressure, then you can make it skinny at the tip and wider down here. But that's okay. You can also just shrink your brush oops, a lot and then just use a teeny weeny little brush on the edges and then make it bigger. It takes longer though. It definitely takes longer if you're using a mouse. Oops. It's all right. We can go back and fix that in a minute. And it is not as precise. So I definitely recommend getting some kind of drawing thing if you're going to do this a lot. That's why I bought one. Because I, I turn, it turned out that I did this a lot. It was fun. I like doing it. It just makes really pretty flower pictures. I love them this way. Okay. All right. I am going to switch and use my finger, though, on my screen. My my screen's not pressure sensitive, so it's not going to do that either. It's going to look just like the mouse, but it's faster and easier for me to control. <laughs> so for the sake of the video, I'm just going to switch and use this. And I know it doesn't show the cursor when I use my finger on my screen. Sorry. But otherwise, this would be a really long video of me trying to use the mouse. All right. Now we're going to work on this petal over here and you just kind of pull those fibers down see it's okay to mix the colors uh, I like doing that I like going making these nice long strokes going like this and then kind of going around the edges um, because I just think it I don't know I just think it looks good um, when you blend the colors like that because naturally they're blended so you want to mimic that in the painting and just try and follow the shape of the petal and constantly click that C key and keep your brush clean definitely helps all right for this last one we are going to start with the smaller tip clean the brush always clean the brush we're going to start with smaller and we're going to make our brush actually a little bigger. All right, there. and then we can.
can get this one done a little bit. But uh, it's bigger because this, it's easier, it's faster, and also because this petal is closer to us, so we want the fibers to be a little bit bigger. Oops. Well, if you make a mistake, you can just blend it back in. All right. Now we're going to make it small again. Clean the brush. Come down here. And we're going to just do the stem. For the stem, you just go up and down. And you can get into the bottom there if you want. All right. I don't know. Don't know if I like that, we'll see. But this is just a demonstration. Okay, so now that you've got your picture, now the fun part, you can change it. You can do whatever we want with it. I like to change the lighting. I think it just, I don't know, makes everything more dramatic. So go to layer, uh, new live filter layer and lighting. Make sure that it's on the top, not just on the tulip layer. Okay, and you can do this a couple ways. Um, you can make the light come from the top. In this case, I want the specular to be all the way up. I don't want to bring it down. Hold on. Let me zoom out. All right, there we go. I want to bring this up, but I want to bring this, this one down. There you go. Like that. That's a good light. But if you do it this way, if you want to uh, show the textures. It's only going to show where the light touches so you won't see any down here. I'll show you that in a second. First I'm going to change the blend mode. Um, multiply. Hey, that's not multiply. <laughs> multiply is a good one. Sometimes screen, but not in this case. Uh, overlay is one I usually use. Sometimes linear light. I like linear light. We're going to use linear light for this picture. It's a little strong though. So we're going to change the opacity here. Just bring it up slowly. And now it's kind of dark at the base. So if you wanted to add texture with the lighting tool, what you would do is just come down to where it says texture and just start sliding this thing around. You can go both directions, left or right on the slider. And it'll give it a slightly different look, but it brings out all those brush strokes. Sometimes too much. You don't need a lot. We're just going to do a lot so you can see it. But down here, it's not going to show. The, the light didn't touch it very much, so it's not going to show the texture very well. Just keep that in mind. And if you change the light to a point, and then oh, you turn the specular all the way down, and then put it in the middle, and then you can shrink it even. We're just going to put it right on the flower. We want our light focus, or our eyes to focus on the flower. But in this in this situation, make it a little bit bigger. The light touches more of the corners, and so the texture shows up a little better. So you can do it either way. I think we'll just leave it like this. Ah, I liked it this way better. Oh, that looks good too. You can just light the flower if you want. I kind of like that without the background. Maybe we'll make it wider. I think I'm going to leave it this way. That looks good. Okay. Uh, now the other way to add texture is to just add a texture overlay. So we're going to go to file, place, and find our textures. Um, and that, these are the canvases that I found for free. The description or the link is in the description below. And you can just pick any one of these that you want. We're just going to pick this one. Now pick this one. It's a little bit bigger. They're really all about the same. And just put it over the picture however you want. And then change the blend mode. And we're going to change it to multiply. Usually overlay, I, but overlay messes the lighting up. Soft light's too soft, screen is too bright. Um, multiply is a good one in this case. You do lose some of that light. Not a lot, but a little. And if you try and get your lighting back by changing the opacity of this layer, then you'll lose your texture. 
that's what it looks like. So if you want to keep all your texture, but get that lighting back or brighten it back up, don't put the lighting layer on top. That's not the right way to do it. This is what happens. The texture from the lighting layer lights up everything on that canvas and it's just too much. So you can turn the texture off in the lighting layer if you want, or you can duplicate your canvas layer and change the new one that you just made to overlay and then change the opacity a lot. Go all the way down and then just bring it up a little, just enough to get back the light that you lost. And that's about it. I mean, you can play around with lots of different things. You can totally change the background if you want. Let me just make one real quick. We're going to come down and make a new pixel layer. And we're just going to fill it with a color just to show you. You can use go to file and use place and place any picture you want back there. But we are just going to, yeah, we'll just use black and we'll just fill that layer with black. And then we are going to drag it behind our tulip. So you can, you can just do that if you want. Now you've still got the painted tulip. You can turn off your canvases if you don't want that texture. And you can even come back in and brush around the edges a little bit more just to make it blend more with that background. And then just, yeah, have a bright tulip on a black background. Or let's change it to white and see what happens. Well, if you did it that way, you'd have to change the lighting because it looks kind of funny. But there you have it. I like it with the background, though. So that's just a quick, easy way to make a little painting using the paint mixer brush tool. So I hope you found something useful in this video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more. Thanks for watching.